Welcome to another edition of Sky This Week with Captain Singru, your portal to the skies above. This week we are turning our gaze towards Corona Borealis, also known as the Northern Crown, a jewel of a constellation located in the Northern Hemisphere. Corona Borealis is a beautiful constellation that looks like an inverted crown, with seven stars of the constellation arranged like jewels in the crown. What we are going to witness is a rare cosmic phenomenon, temporary appearance of a brand new star in this group, which will become visible to the naked eye on Earth just for a day or two, any time between now and the month of September this year. Thereafter, this star will disappear in the sky, only to be seen again after 80 years or so, thereby making it a typical once-in-a-lifetime event for almost everyone watching this video. At the time of recording this video, this extraordinary cosmic event is already taking shape in Corona Borealis in the form of an imminent cosmic explosion about to unfold in the voids of the cosmos. And as we delve into the bizarre happenings there, we will use this opportunity to gaze at the fascinating world of stellar life cycles, birth and the death of stars, including the story of our own sun, which will eventually transform into a red giant, engulfing much of the solar system as we know it, in about 5 billion years from now. So fasten your seatbelts and brace up for a trip to the frontiers of time and space, to a place where stars are born, live and die in spectacular cosmic ballets. Get ready to witness one of the most dramatic events in the universe, the birth of a nova. You must have heard about a nova explosion. It is quite different from a supernova explosion, which typically marks the end of a star's life. A nova, on the other hand, is trying to infuse life into a dead star, a white dwarf. Nova and supernova are both astronomical events involving the sudden release of a vast amount of energy, but they differ significantly in terms of their underlying mechanisms, luminosities, and outcomes. A supernova is the explosive death of a star, resulting in an extremely bright, short-lived object that emits vast amounts of energy, often visible across the entire span of the galaxy. Nova, on the other hand, are relatively faint compared to supernova. While nova can brighten, by a factor of hundreds to thousands of times their original luminosity, they typically do not become as bright as supernova. Like I said earlier, supernova, when they occur, can outshine entire galaxies and briefly outshine the combined light of all the other stars in their host galaxies. While a supernova signifies the end, a nova can be a beginning. Let's have a detailed look in the creation of a nova. It is a tale of two stars. It starts with a binary star system, a pair of stars orbiting each other. One of these stars is a white dwarf, a compact and incredibly dense celestial body. The remnants of a sun-like star that has exhausted its nuclear fuel. The other star is a red giant, a star in the later stages of its life, swelling in size as it burns through its remaining fuel. The white dwarf acting much like a cosmic vampire, draws matter away from its larger companion, the red giant. Over time, it accumulates this borrowed matter on its surface, layer upon layer, like a snowball gathering snow. This material, primarily hydrogen from the red giant, increases the pressure and temperature on the white dwarf's surface. And there is a limit as to how much matter the white dwarf can borrow from its neighbor. When the pressure and temperature on the white dwarf reach a critical point, a runaway nuclear reaction ignites. This is no ordinary fire, but a spark that triggers an explosion of unimaginable scale, a hydrogen bomb detonating in space. This is a nova explosion. The result? A bright outburst visible to the naked eye from thousands of light years away. A new star or nova is born. Nova are recurring events, meaning the white dwarf can undergo multiple nova eruptions over time as it continues to accrete material from its companion star. These eruptions do not typically destroy the white dwarf, but shed the material they have acquired from the companion red giant, 
starting another cycle of collecting this material and shedding it. Supernovae, on the other hand, result in the complete destruction of the original star, leaving behind either a neutron star, a black hole, or in some cases, nothing at all. From the perspective of galactic time scales, nova are relatively common events, with several occurring in our galaxy every year. But from the human perspective, they are quite rare, as only a few of them are bright enough to be observed from Earth through naked eyes. So if you see one, that might be the only one you would see in your entire life. Supernovae, on the other hand, are much rarer, with only a handful observed in a galaxy the size of the Milky Way over the course of a century. Now coming back to Corona Borealis. T. Corona Borealis, a star located closer to the star E. Corona Borealis, the sixth jewel in the crown, as we saw earlier, is all set to undergo a nova explosion any time now. This isn't just any explosion. T. Corona Borealis is a recurring nova, and its explosion is a grand cosmic event that has been observed only a few times in recorded history. It was known to increase its brightness by 2,500 times when observed in 1866, and flared up again 80 years later, in 1946. Going by this timeline, the next such event was expected in 2026. But the astronomers have predicted that it could happen in 2024 itself, any time between now and September this year. The next such event would happen only in year 2104, 80 years from now, making it a real, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to witness this phenomenon. When the Nova event occurs, it would be visible to the naked eye for a window of one to two days and potentially visible for over a week through binoculars. It will then disappear again and would remain hidden from sight for next 80 years. This presents a unique opportunity for the viewers of this channel to record this event in a systematic manner. You can start observing Corona Borealis at nights from now on and start taking its pictures on your smartphone. For clicking pictures of stars and constellations. With smartphone, you can use the pro or night mode of the smartphone. Use of a tripod, if you have one, with a simple mobile phone, holder will make the process even smoother. One pick a night, clicked any time of the night, should suffice for your record keeping. Just think of it with just a smartphone in your hand. You have the power to not only witness one of the greatest events in the universe, right from the comfort of your own backyard, terrace or balcony, but also to record it. When the explosion happens, you will stand witness to the birth of a new star and the death of an old one. You'll see the light from the explosion brighten the night sky, a bright burst of cosmic light visible from Earth. But how do you find T. Corona Borealis in the night sky? It's actually quite simple. You can locate it using the star Arcturus in Butte's constellation and also the constellation Hercules as reference points. For finding Arcturus, if you extend the handle of the Big Dipper, Ursa Major or Sapta Rishi, the next bright star you come across is Arcturus. Once at Arcturus, we will try and locate the Northern Crown, or Corona Borealis, using Arcturus as reference. Once you find Corona Borealis, position of the star T Corona Borealis in the constellation can be easily discerned. It is close to the sixth star in the constellation, counting from top right. Currently, T Corona Borealis is at magnitude 10, meaning it cannot be seen from Earth without the help of a telescope. Typically, stars up to magnitude 6 can be seen through naked eye on a clear night. But when the nova event happens, T Corona Borealis will brighten up with its magnitude falling to 2.0 making it brighter than the brightest star in the constellation, Alpheca, with magnitude 2.2. Not only will T. Corona Borealis suddenly become visible to the naked eye, it will outshine all other stars in the constellation, 
a really magnificent sight, not to be missed by anyone. So grab your telescopes, pair of binoculars, or just be there looking out at the night sky with naked eyes. In the grand scheme of the universe, the Nova event of Te Corona Borealis is more than a spectacle. It's a reflection of the timeless rhythms that unite us all. It speaks of the enduring cycle of life, death, and rebirth that transcends space and time. As your guide on this interstellar voyage, I have tried to give you a heads up and prepare you for this once in a lifetime grand cosmic spectacle about to unfold in our skies. Now it is your turn to spread the word by sharing or forwarding this video or holding small star parties in your neighborhood and discussing this event so that when the spectacle unfolds, you're able to enjoy it in the company of family and friends and don't miss out on this grand cosmic phenomenon. Now that you know where to look, it's time to get yourself familiar with the part of sky where it is likely to happen. You can download SkyMap, SkyView, or Stellarium apps on your mobile phones and use them for locating Arcturus and Corona Borealis in the sky. The link for downloading these apps is given in the description below. Remember, patience is key when observing the cosmos. The explosion might not happen immediately, as the window is open till September, but the anticipation is part of the excitement. And when it happens, you would get to know about it as the media channels all over the world will start covering it in detail. You, as a viewer of Sky This Week, have the privilege of knowing about and preparing for this grand event well in advance. While the Nova explosion of the Corona Borealis is the star of the show this week, the universe is always full of wonders. So from now on, until September, and even after the spectacle happens, keep exploring the night sky, keep asking questions, and keep stargazing. So far in the sky this week, Stay tuned for another episode. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel for the love of the stars and Facebook page for further such information. You can also be a part of our live stargazing tours or astronomy summer camps being held at the Plenum School at Nahan this summer. Held at safe and secure locations deep within the Himalayan mountain ranges, these tours and camps can be your spectacular getaways to spend quality time with your family and friends this summer. For bookings and details, Get in touch with us on the numbers shown on the screen. You can also download the full brochure given in the description below. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel for us to keep bringing such content to you. Also let us know in comments below how you liked this episode and also what specific topics you would like us to cover in future episodes. With this, this is your host Captain Zingru signing off.